Well, this is Joe from Vortex again. Just want to update you on um, where we are with the uh, Anchor Box series of tools. This is the Mark III. Uh, that's been an ongoing evolution from um, information, from feedback coming back from offshore and the jobs offshore, from the clients and from the ROV, uh, ROV crew. Um, primarily, what the client's saying is they want to drop costs, they want to drop installation time, they want to drop vessel time, they want to make things uh, more efficient and, and easier for everyone involved. So um, that's where the key aspects of the, uh, the ROV crews side of it come into play. And one of those was um, installation of the tool, uh, motorization of the tool on the ROV. Um, now we all know the pain and the heartache involved with uh, trying to find brackets and aluminium and, uh, and so on to get, the, uh, get any type of tool onto the ROV. We'll, we'll try to make that easy for the crew. I'll focus on that just now. I'm an ROV guy myself, uh, been out for around 20 years. And, know the pain involved in trying to get the tools uh, onto the ROV. So what we've done here, we're trying to make it very, very simple and user friendly. We've got the, the base uh, anchor boss frame itself and got a, a separate frame that bolts to the anchor boss frame. Now this here setup um, is primarily for the uh, Perry XL series of, of ROV. Um, and how it works, you've got these two brackets, one on the uh, starboard and port side here. And these already pre-drilled to fit into the uh, existing holes on the ROV frame. So they bolt into the ROV, uh, one on either side of course, and then this unit in its, uh, in its entirety simply clips into these frames. Got these lugs here and a pin. Clips in, put the pin in, put your hydraulic hoses on, one uh, top side cable, and that's it, you're ready to go. So you've got a few minutes involved in bolting six bolts on, for the main, uh, main uh, brackets here, then the rest of it literally clips on, bang, and away you go. Um, there's no uh, manufacturer involved in, uh, in brackets and stuff on, on the ROV. We'll try to make it as simple as possible. Now, as far as taking the tool off, I guess, you know, obviously it's the, the reverse. Very, very simple. Simply unclip it, unclip your hoses, and you've got the tool off within a matter of minutes. The idea being, if you want to reconfigure the ROV for a different type of tooling, then you can get this off the back. Um, it keeps the tool out of the inside of the ROV too. Most ROVs nowadays have got so condensed with all the, um, uh, all the sensors and equipment inside, there's simply no room inside for tools anymore. So everything's kind of moving outwards. Um, being that it's going outwards, how can you make it easier for the ROV team to put it on? So this is what we've done here. As I say, this one for the Perry uh, XL series of ROV. What have we done for the UHD? Well, we've also got another bracket just here. Um, which is like the, the, the it fits in the, in the trays and the slots in the back of the ROV. There's a difference between the HD and the UHD and the dimensions slightly, ever so slightly. Uh, we've allowed for that with adjustments within these uh, brackets as well. So this simply slots into the back of the ROV, this frame does, and then the anchor boss, now this Perry frame not, is not bolted on then of course, then the anchor boss frame just in itself sits on the back of this and you'll drill these to wherever suits your ROV because there might be some slight differences. Um, and our frame is slotted to take up any variances in that also and so the anchor boss frame will simply bolt to the top of this and away you go in the water ready to go. So we're taking the mobilisation time out, we're taking the cost involved for the client out of the equation by supplying these ready to go and that's how it should be anyway. So, um, so here we go, dropping mobilisation time and making it easy for the ROV crew to do their job. Um, what's special about the tool? The big thing that the clients again gave us feedback on. They're really happy with the data that we gave them. Um, and it sort of set a bit of a precedent. So right, oh, we've got all this data that you've given us, what else can you do now? So we'll, we're throwing some more things into the equation also. What we're doing, uh, we're sending them uh, pump RPM. So you can see if the pump's working, you can start to diagnose, all right, where's, where's things going on if, if the job's not happening where it should be. So okay, the pump is turning, we know that. Uh, is there any water pressure? Well, we can, do, we can tell them that there's water pressure in both directions. This is all going on the top side of your pedal, which I'll explain soon. Uh, and we're also able to tell them the water flow in both directions. Um, this, is, this is a bit of a unique thing. No one else has been able to do this so far. It's all incorporated into the tool. Um, there's no inline uh, uh, vein type uh, flow meters, turbines, and so on and so on. Now, it's quite cunning how we've done it. And we know it works because we've put the whole tool inside a test tank. We're blowing it down to uh, 340 feet. Uh, we've had ultrasonic flow meters on, and so on, so on, so on, uh, so we know it's accurate. Um, so we're given those uh, main parameters of data, 
let's say the pump RPM, uh, the pump pressure in both directions and the pump flow in both directions, but we're also giving them the um, hydraulic flow coming from the ROV. So again, if there's a, an issue with, the, uh, with what's happening with the installation, then we can tell you, right, uh, you've only got 40 litres a minute or whatever coming from the ROV. So we can tell you if your tooling valve in the ROV isn't quite playing the game or isn't big enough or whatever. It's all about trying to make the, the diagnosis as easy as possible for the ROV crew. Um, we've also got, well, as far as I'll stick with the data side of it. So we've got topside data going up upstairs uh, to, uh, to the topside computer, which is supplied. Now, that's spitting out a whole bunch of information, uh, which is automatically... Um, uh, put into, into graphs and so on, so the client can see what's happening. He can, uh, they can digest all that information later on through a time scale, uh, throughout the entire operation, see what the pressure and the pump flow and sort of water and everything is, uh, is doing all the way through. All very well and good. What happens if the top side goes down? Which does happen sometimes. You've got bad slip rings, uh, umbilical, whatever. So if the top side goes down, then the peri, peri screen downstairs will take over. Again, that's giving you a water pressure in both directions and water, uh, water pump flow in both directions. Um, so this will take over if the top side goes down. If this goes down, then we revert back to a dumb tool. It goes back to the analog gauge, which is supplied, um, which is pretty much what you've got now, and, and the basic tools that are available, which work and work well, but things are moving on from that. Now the clients are saying they're wanting more data, and they want to get added, uh, added value from the product. All right, we're paying X amount of dollars to put this uh, suction pile in. We want to know what happened during an install or during that removal. Give us as much information as you can. We no longer want a dumb tool. We want some fancy bits and uh, a data as well, which we're giving you. But as I say, if all these fancy things fail, it goes back to what you have now. It's a dumb tool. It's about reliability. This is a key thing, reliability all the way through. Um, the water pump in itself, what we're using, is the same pump we've used in our dredge, uh, dredge fleet. We use that because the shaft seal has been so reliable. Um, it's actually good for about 500 psi, it's a mechanical shaft seal. Um, we wanted to use something that could go in the water and stay in the water um, and we've had a great deal of success with that. Um, last jobs on for example, uh, 2,000 metres. So, you know, it's been down deep, uh, worked flawlessly. Uh, in fact, the jobs that it was on, it did, I was on that one, it did uh, the first and the third fastest pile on stalls of the 25 poles that were put in during that, um, during that installation. Now that's attributed to the very, very high water flow. Just so we can get up to 240 cubic metres an hour of water flow out of this thing, very, very high water flow, um, or 15 bar of water pressure, and a combination thereof, you just let us know what you want, and we can set it up to suit that. Um, now, lots of water pressure, uh, rather water flow, you need a better control it, or and water pressure. So what we've done incorporated very, very large relief valves. Now the whole tool is big. It's much bigger because it does a lot more stuff. It's as simple as that. Uh, more features means other things on the, to... Uh, you know, to add to that data. So, and again, to keep it outside of the ROV, because inside of the ROV is so full in the days. Anyways, the, the relief valves that we have, we've got the suction relief, um, which all the other tools do have, um, but of course they're very, very difficult to get at because you have to split the pump and you've got springs, and all sorts of things going on that's quite complex. Uh, time consuming, more importantly, we've kept this as simple as possible. You've got uh, eight bolts, Remove the cap and the whole valve just comes sliding out the end here. We've got the pressure relief valve here and the suction relief valve here. The two identical valves. They're set up with shims. Got one spring and shims. Very, very simple to set up uh, and very, very effective. They're very large. We've done that purposely because we want a very low hysteresis. When this valve starts to crack, you want it to crack as, uh, as cleanly and quickly as possible to keep that pressure control uh, where we want it. Um, now again, on the relief valves, we've got a pressure relief valve here too, uh, which is not standard kit on the uh, on the competitors' uh, units. This is here, suction relief and pressure relief standard uh, standard controls. Now again, on the safety side of it, um, asset safety, the um, the top side computer. Uh, let's say you want to put the pile on an install pressure of two bar, for example. You don't want to exceed two bar, right? Because you can put these uh, relief valves here at your two bar mechanical setting, but on the top side of it. You can also uh, set in a, a warning, right out, we're at 1.8 bar, that'll start to warn, let you know. Um, but you can put in another setting on the top side, we don't want to exceed, exceed 2 bar, and that's going to be an electronically controlled shutdown. Um, as soon as you hit 2 bar, these are open obviously, but if it exceeds 2 bar, it's also going to shut the hydraulics off to the water pump. Bang, the water pump stops altogether, there's no way of exceeding the, um, uh, the given pressure for the, um, uh, for the product. So absolute maximum safety for the, uh, for the product and uh, client's peace of mind. So very, very simple and uh, very effective.
so that's the installation side of it. Um, the backup on the um, on the data. Uh, the tool itself very very similar in construction. Stainless steel, aluminium, zinc anodes everywhere. Usually, so we want to keep it in the water as um, as reliably as possible for as long as possible. Um, one of the things we found, obviously, the control can that uh, obviously gathers all the data. Um, how we're doing the water flow was a little bit of a secret, uh, but as I say, we've done loads and loads of backup testing with that, and uh, very happy with the accuracy that we have with it. Now, what we found on previous jobs, because it puts out so much water, if you're pumping a lot of water, of course, when you are pumping a lot of water, the discharge will act like a jet that starts to throw the ROV around. So, what we do is incorporate this. So again, this is feedback from the ROV crew. Uh, so they can um, direct the jet of water coming out of the tool um, to wherever they want it to stop the ROV getting thrown around so you can move the, the jet up or backwards or down or wherever you like. So just little things like that, we're trying to listen to the ROV crew and, um, and make the job easy for them. Yeah, I'm an ROV guy myself and we want manufacturers to listen to us and, uh, and, and hear these ideas and bring them to the tools in the field to make it easy for us. Um, again on the installation side of it, we've got flotation here, that comes with the tool. So the whole tool, uh, as you see it here, weighs around about 12 kgs heavy in fresh water. So um, essentially in salt water, it's around about neutral buoyancy, um, plus or minus a few kgs. Um, the entire tool <coughs> is available through Ashted, uh, Ashted uh, represents Vortex globally. Uh, so these tools are available uh, throughout the regions around the world. Just give Ashton a call, um, let, it, let them know and ourselves what pressure you want to run. We can preset these things uh, for the job if you like. But of course it's so simple that the ROV crew have no problems at all changing all the all parameters, uh, the mechanical and software side of it, to, uh, to allow it to, to get in the water as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, again, it's back to feedback from the client and from the ROV. If there's, uh, when you see these things out in the job, if you see anything that we can done, it can be done better, let us know. We can put that straight into the tool and make it happen for you. It's about making your job as easy as possible, dropping costs for the clients and um, increasing productivity. That's what it's all about. The client wants barely battered out of the product, putting a pole in. What happened during that pole? We want data, we want feedback, we want graphs. This is all done automatically for you. We've made this as simple as humanly possible. So um, that's what it's all about. Um, any questions please give us a call and drop us an email uh, via Ashted or directly and we'll do whatever we can to, uh, to help you out. Thanks very much. Joe here from Vortex again. Just want to show you a couple of the features on the um, top side software. Um, when connected and recording there'll be two status bars lighting up green so you know you've got good comms. Uh, the Power supply is integrated into the lid on the Pelican box, as is the um, uh, data cable, which uh, is, I think is about three meters long, and that can be joined into your uh, survey string. Uh, you can connect onto the internet on the face panel as well, and uh, pull off the, uh, the, the client data through the USB port here. Now, we're recording um, pump RPM, so you can see if there's an issue with the pump with the hydraulic supply, uh, again, good for diagnostics. Uh, we're recording pressure in both directions and suction uh, and blow and we're also recording water pump flow in both directions and suction and blow. This is unique as far as um, uh, suction pump tools go. This is all standard equipment. Uh, it's not some add-on feature that you have to pay for. This is how it should be. Uh, we'll put it on there as a standard part of the kit. We're also um, recording the uh, hydraulic flow to the pump. Again, good diagnostics. So if there's an issue with uh, the installation, is there something wrong with the pump, etc., etc., we can look back at the flow. Okay, there's not enough oil getting to the pump. The tooling valves aren't correct or whatever the situation may be. All good, helpful uh, tools for the ROV crew to diagnose with. The usual um, inputs here, the, the job installation, dive number, ROV client, and so on and so on. Um, we're given the water pump flow and hydraulic flow uh, all in data downstream here. Uh, it's not working at the moment obviously because I haven't got it uh, running up on the tool because the hydraulic pack's too noisy to run it. Um, but it gives you an idea of what's going on. So this is all graphed in real time. And again here through the pressure and on the flow. These are all time, uh, time charts. So you can look back at the job. Okay, we saw a spike. 
let's go back to 11.42, whatever that time was, and you can see all these parameters, what was going on throughout the job, so you can see if there was an anomaly uh, during the install or the uh, removal of the, of the pile. Um, at the end of the job, you can hit exit, it'll ask you, do you want to stop recording? Hit yes, it'll automatically generate graphs, and um, those graphs uh, are out of an Excel file, and so you could pull out the entire uh, run through an Excel file and see what was going on. Uh, they're all in, and again in graph uh, graph form also, which you can see throughout the the rest of the installation manual. We'll try to keep this thing as simple as possible. We can add um, ROV altitude. We're, there's so many more possibilities what we can do with the software. Um, next generation of this will be uh, basically put in your inputs and um, the computer will tell the pump what to do and it won't go any further over those uh, over those flows. So we'll be able to adjust the uh, the flow of the pump with the ROV, rather with the top, uh, top side software. Now you've got your um, uh, uh, your limits that you want to stick to. So let's say you don't want to go over um, your maximum allowable pressure delta of 2 bar. When you start to get close to 2 bar here, this will start lighting up orange. Let's get rid of that for a moment. Now the emergency stop is set at 2.5 bar, let's say that's the maximum maximum you want to go to that there will come up in a red uh, red dial and what that will do is activate the um, the shut off on the pump it will shut off the hydraulics to the pump and the pump will stop immediately you cannot over pressurize the product um, it's maximum asset protection and this is all feedback come back from the clients uh, they want a safe uh, safe tool the point being they're paying a lot of money to get these poles installed um, the vessel time the ROVs and so on and so on, they want a value added uh, product where, can, where they can garnish some information from the install and so, say, right, what actually happened? Can we look back at what their parameters were? We were working on safe parameters, uh, this is able to give them all of that and more. This is a standard feature where we should, where we think um, suction anchor pumps should be going. Uh, as I said before in an earlier uh, video, it's a dumb tool at the end of the day with all these added features and safety backups. So um, again, any questions, contact the team at Ashted uh, or Self at Vortex uh, directly and we're more than happy to help you.